Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. The Government Accountability Office is reporting that the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID, is failing to maintain sustainable projects in Haiti. The GAO analyzed 23 USAID projects across all eight sectors of USAID's portfolio, which makes about $1.7 billion worth of reconstruction projects. Now joining us from New York is Francois Pierre-Louis. Francois is an associate professor of political science at Queens College. And joining us from Washington, D.C. is Jake Johnston. Jake is a research associate at the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. So, Jake, when the GAO said that they're unsustainable, these projects, what did the report specifically identify? Yeah, so there was a couple a couple different things, and they separated between infrastructure activities and non-infrastructure activities. And all of these projects were sort of big-ticket items. They all had budgets over $10 million. But I think what the most glaring thing was that they really hadn't done any sort of analysis, internal analysis, when they were designing these projects, if they would be sustainable at all. In fact, what the GA report said was that it wasn't until December of 2014, just this past fall, that U.S. had even started to do those for infrastructure activities. They also said they wouldn't begin to do them for non-infrastructure activities until 2018. And yet, they've already committed over $1.7 billion, and we're five years after the earthquake, and they're just starting to take sustainability issues into account. First of all, when we talk about sustainability, do we also have to be talking about building capacity within the government? Has USAID been working closely with the Haitian government um, to even build that capacity? So I, I think the assumption USAID and a lot of other institutions in, uh, that comes uh, that come to Haiti is that the government is co-op, therefore they, they can bypass the government and become a shadow government to take care of things. For example, the USAID is involved in every sector in Haiti education, agriculture, health, all the major sectors. And those policies are not really consulted with the government when they start doing them. A lot of times when the money comes to the USAID, they outsource it to other NGOs like CHF, uh, BAI, or different other institutions that are coming from the Beltway. So therefore, basically what's happening is that the money comes to Haiti and goes right outside back to the Washington, D.C. As a result, the government is bypassed. Usually, you know, I, I did a study uh, several years ago. I was uh, talking to the uh, director of planning in the southeast of Haiti. I was there in Jackman with him. And I said, you know, I just came from the countryside. There are a lot of projects going on there. Do, are you aware of those projects? He said, no. I said, how come you are the director of planning, which is supposed to su supervise all the things that are happening in the southeast, and you're not aware? He said, you know, a lot of the NGOs, a lot of groups just come by, they start the project, sometimes they're doing the same project in the same area, and they're not check with us. And I said, there is no reaction by the government. He said, what can we do? Because if we say no, they're just going to pack and leave, and we might lose the money or we might lose uh, the friendship. But so so I, I want to present the counter argument, though, because some people say, you know, the government is corrupt. We can't trust the government. So why should we be giving them funds if they are so corrupt? What do you make well, of that? Well, it goes both ways. A lot of the NGOs are corrupt also. Some of the NGOs come into Haiti, they embezzle the money, and usually, in fact, there have been incidents where USAID institutions that are out, been outsourced by um, uh, USAID came in, they embezzle money, they mismanage money, and usually it takes several months for the USAID to let the Haitian government know about that. You just hear that the director of that uh, NGO was transferred quietly so to some other places, or the program was closed, without ever saying openly what had happened with the money. So therefore, it's not the corruption is not only one way into Haiti, it's also with the NGOs, and also how they manage the money. So then you... I was, was going to ask Jake for his response as well. I'm sure you you hear that all the time. The Haitian government is corrupt, so we can't trust them with the funds. Yeah, and I mean, I, I would largely echo Francois's comments. I mean, I think, you know, even if it's not sort of what you think of as embezzling funds or just directly skimming money off the top, I think when you look at the operations of these NGOs and you look at really how we've designed our foreign aid system, it's just ingrained corruption. I mean, it's not illegal. It's just how the system works. These organizations have ridiculously high overheads. They pay super high... Uh, salaries to foreign experts as opposed to local staff. And when you ask a Haitian if they think it's corrupt when they see a bunch of NGOs behind gated, gated communities and driving around in large SUVs all around town, that seems like corruption to them. 
right? And so I don't think it's fair to sort of just look at this one way. I think, you know, further, just for a concrete example here, I mean, one of the projects that the GAO looked at was a shelter program that USAID had done near the Caracol Industrial Park, Caracol E-Camp. They were supposed to build 750 houses up there. Now, they gave that to an American firm located here inside the Beltway. They went down there, built the houses, and then a year later, they realized, USAID realized that they had used substandard concrete. The sewer system that they built was inadequate and would flood when it rained, flooding the entire village. The entire village. And now both those contractors have been suspended and are unable to get government contracts while a legal investigation plays out. So you can see that we're talking about efficiency of aid money. And you can't say that, you know, the Haitian government's corrupt, so we can't work with them, but we'll work with these contractors who have a poor track record of actually getting things done. Francois, I want to get your take on this um, new model that's sort of being developed in Haiti, is this community-driven development, really having the community set their priorities, then be the ones to say, um, you know, health, sanitation is our number one issue, um, education is second, and then building projects around them being the lead on, on, on said projects. Do you think that is really the model that the United States government should be buttressing, as opposed to these shadow government models that, that you were talking about earlier? Well, that would be a huge improvement if they're really carried out, try to implement it. If it becomes something like what the Red Cross did in Haiti, then it becomes a shadow, just something for public relations. Because one of the uh, litmus tests of this uh, new approach would be how, how involved the community organizations are and uh, who, ha who is handling the budget and where the investments is coming from. So a lot of times you have a lot of nice ideas on paper, and when you go there, you realize that it's totally different from what they're saying. For example, as Jake mentioned, the Caracol project, from the beginning, all the local politicians in Haiti, the mayors, the legislators, the deputies, the senators, everyone said, you know, you're building small houses. Haitians are large family members. They have extended family. You cannot build a two-room house and expect them to live there in the middle of nowhere. But they didn't listen to the Haitians. They said this is what they were going to do, and they decided to do it. So I, I, the, the whole question is the fact that they're giving you money. They, uh, they take the right to decide what they're doing, going to do with it. So you know, it's more of a charity than so much of an aid. There's a difference between charity and aid. You give aid to help the person to come out of its situation. But if you give charity, you will always find a reason to keep the person dependent on you. So I think this is what has been happening in Haiti for the past 50 years. Oh. Every time there's a crisis, money pours into Haiti, and then the crisis is gone, and then, you know, not, nothing, nothing has changed. So this is definitely a situation where Haitians have to get out of it, but definitely we didn't get there by ourselves. The international community contributed a lot to getting us there. They, they have really a responsibility to get us out of it. Just like cholera was on in Haiti for a long time, the UN bought cholera, but the UN refused to accept its responsibility toward this issue. USAID is really doing a, a lot of, putting a lot of money in health, in education, in agriculture, but still the number of people who are passing the exams, the national baccalaureate exams in Haiti is still at 25%. Even though you have more people taking the exams every year, the number of passing is still the same for the past 15 years. So therefore, there is a major problem with all the money that the USAID has invested in Haiti, in, uh, in education. The same thing with agriculture. We are importing more food now than we imported 30 years ago, even though the USAID is investing in agriculture. So if you look at every sector, it's the same thing. All right, Francois Pierre-Louis, as well as Jake Johnson, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.